Mrs. McKinney? No, I want to say walking. Walking, okay. Walking. Welcome to video number nine in fluid mechanics. So this is the last video of section three. And in the previous two videos, we covered uh, conservation of mass. So that was mass balances over control volumes. And then we did the momentum equation, which is actually force balances over control volumes. And in that case, they were not accelerating. So they were either stationary or moving with a constant velocity. And now in this video, we're gonna cover the momentum equation which is force balances over control volumes that are accelerating. So now we get to look at things like rockets, because when we draw a control volume around a rocket, uh, it's accelerating, right? So we'll get to do some of these really fun and interesting uh, accelerating problems now uh, in this video here. Okay, so we're at the final subsection now of section three, which is 3.5, and it's called momentum equation for control volume with rectilinear acceleration. Put in more simple terms, we're basically gonna do force balance over a control volume where the control volume itself is accelerating. Okay, so we can think of the classic example here being the rocket that's blasting off. Okay, so we'll just look at one term here in this title that we might not be familiar with, rectilinear. Like, that word makes me think if I was like, at a doctor's appointment and my doctor started saying like rectilinear uh, that I would like be concerned about that. But anyways, what does it really mean? So rectilinear means we're moving in straight lines and the key aspect of that is that there's no like rotational component of our acceleration. Okay, so we know in this one we're gonna be building upon what we did in the last subsection when we had force balances of control volumes that were not accelerating. So again, we're starting here with Newton's second law, which we've seen a few times now, right? And we remember that that's in reference to a system. Okay, now I'm gonna walk through this breakdown, but I'm not gonna do, again, I'm not gonna do a detailed derivation. I'm just gonna walk through and we're gonna discuss how we include the acceleration into our equation. So the key here is to really look at two different things. We're going to be looking at our, our relative reference frame. And so on the left with the capital X, Y, Z, we remember now that's in reference to the ground. So we had that as like our stationary reference point when we looked at control volumes moving with a constant velocity. So same thing here. And when we use lowercase x, y, z, now that's the reference frame that is the control volume itself. So that's relative to the control volume itself, which now is accelerating, okay? Now, Newton's second law is based on the one on the left. So our force is equal to the rate of change of linear momentum. That's relative to our inertial reference frame right? The not accelerating one. But the one on the right, relative to the control volume, that's the one we're going to want to use to calculate this, right? Because, for example, if we think about the rocket and we have fluid, you know, crossing the boundaries, right? So shooting at the bottom of the rocket, all that information is going to be relative to the control volume itself. So the easiest way to go about this is just to account for the fact that the reference frame is accelerating. So instead of saying the force is just the rate of change of the linear momentum, we'd have to then add a component onto that that accounts for the acceleration of the reference frame. Okay, and we see how we do that mathematically on the line below. We'll move it over to the left and we'll say now the force minus the mass of our system times the acceleration of the reference frame, that equals to the rate of change of linear momentum. So that's like a rewrite there of Newton's second law, where we now directly factoring in the fact that our reference frame is accelerating. So the RF is reference frame. And so we know what we can do again when we have this integral relative to our mass or our system is we've done this trick a few times. We replace the dm with rho dv because we want to be integrating over the volume. We want it relative to the control volume. And then we integrate over the control volume. Okay, now on our next line is what we've seen before. And that's how we balance the rate of change of the linear momentum. And so we remember on the right, which we've seen previously, those two terms account for the rate of change of the linear momentum of the matter within the control volume and then the term that accounts for the linear momentum that's crossing the boundaries right across cs which is our control surfaces okay now we just sub in what we had on this line right instead of just force it's the force and then we also have to consider the acceleration of the reference frame we put that here okay and now it's our full equation and we can see really the only difference in this is that we've added in this single term here that accounts for the fact that our reference frame is accelerating. And, and by reference frame, as a reminder, we mean the control volume itself is accelerating, right? So I'll do an example after this so we can really see this, but that would be things like a rocket where you draw the control volume around the rocket itself. So then one more simplification on the line below, we know our external forces are gonna be the surface forces and the body forces. We've seen that breakdown before. We can break all the forces out into surface and body forces. So in the line below, that's just kind of the complete form there. Okay, so we box that one because we can use that one. I'll throw that on a fresh slide here because most often what we're gonna be 
using is the component form of this, right? As we did for the inertial control volumes. So I've broken it out into the component form here. And again, we can see that there's just this one term that's different in each of these. That's the only difference from the inertial frames. And then the term on the far right, so I'll circle them, these ones here, where we're accounting for the linear momentum that's crossing the boundary. If we have what's inside the uh, integral here, if that's not changing over the area, so we have a uniform velocity or an average velocity, which again is very common. Remember that V dot DA is just Q, our volumetric flow rate. We might have that value, or we might have rho times V dot DA, which together is our mass flow rate. Very common in these questions, as we'll see from the examples, to have either of those values. So in the case where we would have the uniform or the average velocity, we don't have to integrate, and we remember we can replace that then. We replace that integral with a summation. Instead, and I haven't written them all out again because they're just the same thing, we've seen this before, uh, but remember that can be replaced with a summation for the case where we have uniform velocity. And I think that'll be the one we use the most often in the examples. And just an important note about that term circled in green there, that is what what we commonly refer to as thrust. Okay, so that's the force that's generated because we have a fluid moving across our control volume boundary. So the idea there is you can shoot this fluid out from the object and that generates a force that we call thrust. And we've seen that driving our airplane turbines. We see that driving rockets. That's the force that drives the rockets. So I like the connection there to think of that term as like our thrust term. Okay, so that's really all for this. There was just the one term that's different. Uh, now I think, again, I think it's really nice to do examples so we can really see this. So a quick summary on this one was we just, in this case, did force balances for control volumes where the control volume itself is accelerating. Classic example there would be like the rocket. Rocket's your control volume. And as it blasts off, it accelerates upwards. And then we determine which equations to use. Really the only difference from the inertial frames, the ones that were not accelerating, was we had to just add one more term to account for the acceleration of the reference frame. Where reference frame, here's our control volume frame. Okay, so that's it. So in the following video to this, uh, we'll do an example. Bye bye. Another one? No. Okay. <laughs> Good stuff, guys.